Hey, Apophis here. I'm here with another Elden Ring build video. This time inspired by some of you beautiful people in the comments. Well, not really. I already had the build on hand anyway as a variant to the Light Greatsword video. But now I'm kind of making it into a full build. Testing the Storm Arts on a 54-54 quality build. So that's 54 strength, 54 dex. We're achieving that by using the Divine Beast Head to basically give us plus 8 stats, why not? It also makes our Storm Arts stronger, so again, very beneficial to the build. I was also pretty pleasantly surprised by his performance on things like Cold Greek Katana. And if you want the TLDR on how much better quality it is with the Storm Arts versus like 70 decks, I'd say it's about... 10 to 15 percent stronger on average it's a little hard to compare without getting someone who has like the exact same amount of defense to test them all but just comparing it to the previous video that does seem to be the case and so you can see my stats here i've also got a few more build ideas for you in particular it actually does hit extremely hard with bloodhound fanged and milady so those options are super strong on quality. On other weapon types, it's like maybe a few points off from the strongest for the most part. Stuff like backhand blades, other fast weapons like clean rot, they all scale pretty well. At least at room level 150. I think below 150, it's kind of a bad spec, but now you finally have the point freedom to capitalize on it. So let's get into the invasion clips. This first one was in an area I didn't even know existed. I didn't know this side low area actually was here at all. I just saw their HP bars. And of course, we have a Guts cosplayer. I'm so thankful that stupid Rivers of Blood weapon art doesn't stun anymore. Fun fact, Guts cosplayer sent me some hate mail right afterwards. Well. Too bad for him. Another one in Bellarat. And I'm still using the Light Great Sword setup here, using the Lightning Quick Grease to add a good 100 damage or so. Or 100 AR, excuse me. And we're using both the Jump Attack Talisman and the Jump Attack Chest to add, I believe, 15% more Jump Attack damage. Jump R2 is super strong in this weapon, so it makes perfect sense to boost it. And then Shard of Alexander for our Sword Dance, which is a good way to catch people. Having Stormcaller used against me. <sighs> Got Timmy with his Blasphemous Blade over there. And see, just one hit of the Jump R2 there did over 500 damage. I'm not exactly sure how to connect with both hits, but if I did, it would be pretty spicy. Wow, almost got blundered there. Not sure what he was trying to do with that grab at that distance, but uh, whatever. Catch him with the running R2, which is another two hit attack. I actually don't like any of the R1 buttons on here, aside from pressing R1 after another attack. It's like R2 and R1, jump R2 and R1, or running R2 and R1 are all fine. But pressing a button by itself to start up is pretty atrocious. 
So uh, yeah, now we get into testing the storm stuff. So this is an Omen Cleaver with Storm Caller. Two-handed, I'm getting about 760 AR, but it's probably using the one-handed AR for damage calc. Which would probably be something like 712. And yep, that definitely roll catches people a lot. He tried to roll behind me, got caught by a storm collar, then tried to mash afterwards. And then I hit that guy with some phantom range. I didn't even realize I had an ally either. This is one of the few non-ganks I ran into over like the two days of recorded footage for this. See, that was some real meaty damage on the Storm Blade. So that's with the Storm Talisman in charge of Alexander. And it's even on cold. I think it would have done more damage if it was on a quality weapon. But the cold proc on Great Katana is actually pretty good. I think it's like 127 build up per hit. These guys were ganking at the starting area. Love it. And oh my god, these guys really can't stop pressing. Like, you see them with Rakshasa and they're trying to gank, but you, you know they're just gonna mash the art. One of the ways to deal with it is just simply out damage it with your own armor. So, yeah. This was actually a pretty interesting invasion. I didn't even realize that I had an ally at first when he comes in there. Managed to nail the orange phantom. And I don't know, it was pretty late at night. I, for whatever reason, thought he was an orange phantom, so I started attacking him. Looking back at it, I probably shouldn't have done that, but it's whatever. It happened. I was a traitor red for once. Just speeding up this clip a little bit. So what was really interesting here is this guy's build, right? So he's using like, I don't know, Danes or something, or maybe dry leaf. But he's got a shield here. And I don't know if he has deflect here or not, because oh my god, like he was able to just take like no damage from the attack and just armor right through. I didn't actually realize that the guard counter on martial arts was actually pretty good. It had way more armor than I thought. So I'm just trying to break his guard by attacking into it. I figured he would have ran out of stamina already, but I guess not. And no freeze procs either. Oh, well, I guess there was one right there. It's another meaty storm blade. At this point, I probably could have switched to a different weapon. I think backhand blades and blind spot would have taken care of this, but he attacks into my storm collar and uh, that's that. I think the full damage of storm collar on that weapon, which is a lightning banished knight helper, would have been about 1.3k. But the invasions were not all fun and games. There's this one guy that was playing and uh, he was so laggy, like he's just skipping around, and now he's got ganker buddies. This was, uh, he's not fun. Can't even tell what you're hitting. And there are plenty more ganks. There were some guys at the first step, all with like the frog heads being a three man gank, but that one was at least funny. This guy over here is a real shitter. So as soon as his buddy dies, he's just running for dear life here. And he's got light roll, of course. You know, I look back on this clip and I really wish I had just swapped my weapons out for backhand blades because that, that's really the most consistent way to catch light rollers. I, I have no clue where he went, by the way. Successfully juked me.
I'll take that trade. That was a good Stormcaller opportunity, but here's another one. And my god, that did some damage. I was surprised I couldn't finish him with the daggers. I just spam and roll there, but uh, whatever. He'll come back. And of course, this guy's super brave now he's got back up. I, I don't even understand the point of blue vamps in this game. They're, they're always spawning into a situation where the host already has an advantage. They're not bailing out, like, you know, lone hosts who are struggling. It'd be one thing if they only spawned in, let's say, if, like, an orange phantom died or some other condition was met, where you had a host who was alone. But, they tend to just spawn in and turn the 1v3 into a 1v4. And he did not roll out of that. And then, unfortunately, my winged flask kind of expired and I didn't hard swap all my equipment. This would have been the moment to hard swap everything. Go down to like 112 poise and just use backhands. Because there, there's no way I was going to catch him. Not that well in any way. And I guess he didn't get hit by the first piece of Stormcaller. Otherwise, I might actually kill him. But, whatever. And of course they point down. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will have a follow-up video containing 1v1s of this build. Um, I'm also in the middle of recording some Dark Souls 2 and 3 content, so look forward to that. I'll probably be playing a good bit of Dark Souls 3 in the near future, but uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time, and uh, yeah, have a good one. <laughs>